Welcome back to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. This week, we're sitting down with experts from Dow AgriSciences, as well as some fellow cattlemen to talk about the importance of forage management. We've had a great discussion so far, and Pat, I want to pick it up with you. Back us up a step. Why do weeds and brush encroach in our pastures in the first place? Yeah. Well, one of the things, in many cases, it's just natural succession. It's going to happen. It's going to start to convert. In my part of the world, that's going to try to convert back to trees. And so brush is going to move in. But in many cases, too, it's a result of some other problem with management, either grazing management, fertility, and, and something is driving that. And oftentimes, coming out of a drought is a, is a time when, uh, if the rains are timed right, you're going to get that first flush is going to be weeds. Mm -hmm. And Glenn, have you always had a program to control weeds in your operation? Yes, we have. Fortunately, we don't have a lot of weeds in our native pastures, but uh, noxious weeds, we, I, when I was a little kid, we'd go out with my dad and, and spray Canada thistle and those type of weeds. Uh, now we've, we've got some other uh, noxious weeds that have moved into our area, maybe some leafy spurge or diffuse uh, nap weed. Uh, of course, the, the thistles are still there. But uh, we have always had a program in place to make sure that these weeds stay under control. Jeff, I know environmental stewardship is near and dear to your heart like so many other cattlemen. Does that impact how you control and treat weeds and brush? Sure, it does for sure. Uh, other than a few areas of uh, cheatgrass or Japanese brome, we really don't have a, a weed problem on our, on our place. And I think our grazing management plan is designed specifically to keep the weeds out. If you have a healthy grassland ecosystem, it's hard for those annuals to move in. So it's really not something that we have to deal with at this time. So Pat, once I've identified that I've got a, a weed or a brush program, a problem in, in my pasture uh, land, um, how do I go about selecting the right product for the job? Well, the right product for the job is just trying to integrate your management plans or, or what, what your strategies are as far as what are you managing for. If it's a, a mix uh, or if it's a grass, uh, then there are options where there are grass-selective herbicides. If, if you have an integration of, say, a legume in some parts of the country, then there may be some strategy to where you have to use the herbicide to control the weeds and then plan on getting that legume back at a later date. But it's, it's more integrating it with the particular weed problem, doing an assessment of, of that weed pressure that's out there, and then what, what needs to go, coincide with those other portions, uh, the fertility management, the grazing management, that's going to get the most value out of that. Dave, Dow AgriScience has a rich history of bringing great products to the market and, and spent a lot of money in research and development. I'd be interested to know what are some of the latest molecules you're working with or, or maybe we'll be seeing here shortly. Yeah, actually we um, are in the process of really kind of rounding out our amino pyrrolid brand of products. Um, Chaparral was uh, introduced a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and uh, has been a, a, a great hit. Uh, and a brand new one mm -hmm. that we've launched this year is called Sendero. Hmm. And it is uh, an amino pyrrolid based product and it is specifically targeted at mesquite. Ah. And uh, we used to have Remedy and Reclaim mm -hmm. uh, and that's been the industry standard for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now Sendero has come along, and we are getting uh, 10 to 15 percent more root kill wow. uh, per acre compared to the old standard, and it's about 40 percent uh, more consistent. So we've really tightened up the control on mesquite, and folks are really going to be excited about that down in that Texas, Oklahoma, and New Mexico area. Absolutely, yeah. Mesquite's great on the barbecue grill, not so good in the pastures. Pat, uh, I would ask you, what should folks keep in mind when they go to treat mesquite? Yeah, mesquite is one of the uh, brush species that has been researched intensely. Uh, and, and Texas A&M has done a fabulous job of, of, of honing in on that timing. And it basically comes down to when is that leaf mature? Mm. When is the foliage mature? and the growth stops so that now the carbohydrates are being, this, the leaf is becoming a source rather than a sink. And so it's sending carbohydrates to that root system. That's when you want to make your application. Well, this is a great discussion, gentlemen, and helpful for any of us who are trying to control weeds and maximize forage in our own operations. We need to take another break, but up next, we'll have a demonstration right here in the studio, and we'll talk about the proper sprayers you should use to help keep those weeds under control. 